Hello, I'm Hugh Rob Johns. I'm technical editor of Sound on Sound magazine, and we're here today at Half Ton Studios to test out the Slate VMS microphone system. Uh, and we're going to compare it with a number of vintage mics that we've uh, managed to get on loan from FX Rental uh, to see how accurately its uh, emulations compare to the real thing. The Slate VMS system uh, basically comprises a microphone uh, and a microphone preamp uh, and a whole load of plugins. Uh, and the idea is that by having a set microphone and preamp, that aspect of the technology is known to the rest of the system. So you know you have a reference starting point, if you like. And then the plugins take that signal and process it uh, and try and model all of the characteristics, the frequency response, the nonlinearities, uh, all the kind of inherent distortions and things that come with the vintage microphones that it's trying to emulate. This isn't a new idea as such, and there are, there are other companies that have done uh, various uh, variations on the same theme where you take a microphone and you try and process the signal to make it sound like something else. Um, but the, the, the approach that Slate have taken uh, is based on very accurate modeling, and that's been made easier because of the advance in processing power. Um, and the fact that they have a, a reference microphone to start with um, and a reference preamp, so they know much more of the signal chain than some of the other systems have done in the past. The Slate VMS system models a wide range of different microphones, and obviously we can't test them all, but what we're going to do here is test four classic microphones. Uh, we're going to start with the U47, Neumann U47, uh, then we're going to try the U67, the later model, uh, and then from AKG we're going to do the C12, and we've also got the Sony C800G. So they're four very well-known, very classic um, studio vocal mics, essentially, um, all large diaphragm capacitor mics. So the testing methodology is this. We're going to have each microphone set up against the VMS mic. We'll get the capsules as close together as we possibly can, uh, and we'll go through the, the range of four microphones, each time repeating the same tests. And those tests are going to be a female vocal with a backing track, a male vocal playing a guitar at the same time, uh, and the idea is we're not trying to record the guitar, we're listening to the spill from the guitar into the microphone. And the reason we want to do that is because, although it's relatively easy to model the on-axis response of a microphone, it's very hard to do that for the off-axis response, because that depends on the design of the capsule and the microphone housing and all those kind of things. So we just wanted to hear how the emulations vary between the, the original models with an off-axis sound. So a bit of spill from the guitar would, would test that. Um, and then the third test we're going to do is just spoken word. It's a voiceover recording, just again to give us a different aspect of, of the sound of these microphones. So the microphone we're using for this first test is the Neumann U47. Uh, and this particular model uh, we've got from uh, FX Rentals, very kindly for them. Uh, and this is a fixed cardioid version. Normally U47 has a switch on the front by the grille that allows you to select the polar pattern between uh, Omni and cardioid. This particular one is fixed in cardioid and it's obviously had a bit of a hard life, but it sounds fantastic and we're going to use that as our reference model for this test. Uh, now the U47, um, Neumann generally give model numbers based on the year of manufacture. This thing was designed in 1947, but it was actually introduced to the market in 1949. Uh, it carried on, they carried on making it until about 1965. Um, it's obviously a valve capacitor mic. The valve is a VF14, it's a pentode, uh, and that went obsolete in the late 50s, which caused some problems actually, which I'll come back to. Um, the capsule was originally based on the M7, the infamous M7, and then later became known as the K47 or K49. Uh, it's a single capsule with a shared common backplate, which actually makes manufacture quite difficult, and the later microphones used a different design technique, different build technique. Uh, which I'll talk about when we get to those microphones later. Um, but there's two diaphragms, uh, and the idea is that you can change the biasing voltage on the, on the diaphragms in order to change the polar pattern. So the U47 is normally switchable between cardioid and omnidirectional. It had a system mic called the U48, which went between um, cardioid and figure of eight. Uh, this particular microphone is actually a fixed pattern version. It's fixed cardioid. Uh, normally there's a little switch on the front to slide, uh, to, you slide around to change the polar pattern. Uh, this one's a fixed version. Um, towards the end of its life, when the VF14 valve went out of production, uh, they brought out a different model called the U47N, and the N stood for New Vista, it was a New Vista valve. Uh, but it actually it changed the sound quality slightly. Uh, so they, they finished production of this thing in 1965, and, and the, the follow-on model was the U67, which we'll talk about later. Um, but it's a really interesting microphone, it's very well known. It was uh, marketed in America um, by Telefunken. And it's probably, I mean, everybody and their dog sings through a U47, but it's probably most associated with Frank Sinatra. And he always referred to his Tele microphone, uh, and the Tele referred to Telefunken, which was the branding they used in America. Uh, and it became hugely popular in America. It, it kind of displaced all of the, the old RCA 
uh, ribbon microphones that were the, the studio standard up to that point. Um, this thing took over and, and basically dominated the recording world from the, the late 40s onwards, really. Most Neumann capsules are centre terminated, which means if you look at, at the thing in the light, you can see there's a little screw right in the middle of the diaphragm. Um, and most Neumann microphones are built in that way. Other companies like AKG tended to use edge terminated capsules. And in fact, the, uh, the VMS microphone is an edge terminated capsule. So there's a, an immediate difference uh, there. Um, when the U47 met the end of its days because of the, the VF14 valve going out of production, uh, they brought out the FET version. They, they basically turned it into a solid state microphone and that became the U47 FET. Um, but again, because of all the different electronics, it ended up sounding quite a different microphone. You come as all, both great and small, come listen to my ditty. For it is ye, and none but ye will view my form with pity. For I can read, write, dance, and fight. In fact, it's all my honour. My failing is that I love strong beer. I am a rambling coma. And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free and I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free The potato is a starchy, tuberous crop from the perennial nightshade Solanum tuberosum. The word potato may refer either to the plant itself or to the edible tuber. In the Andes, where the species is indigenous, there are some other closely related cultivated potato species. In this test we're going to be using the AKG C12. Uh, this was a microphone that was introduced in 1953 and they made it for a decade so it stopped in around 1963. The thing is that during that time almost every aspect of the microphone changed and subsequently a lot of repaired models and service models have been changed as well and we've discovered that with this particular example which is on loan from FX Rental. Um, in its development they changed the diaphragm material, they changed the diaphragm thickness, they changed the uh, cavity in the back of the uh, the body uh, of the microphone. They also changed the transformer in the microphone. This particular model has a replacement uh, later generation capsule which has a nylon surround. The early ones had a brass surround uh, and this one you can just see in the right light that it has a nylon surround. That will make it a slightly different sound um, probably from the model that, uh, that has been uh, designed for the slate system. So it'll be interesting to compare them. Um, polar patterns on this microphone, you can switch it into nine different polar patterns and rather than switching on the body, they're controlled from a box which connects to the power supply. The power supply is called an N12 uh, and the box that controls the polar pattern is called an S12 and it's a really nice old-fashioned box with a big switch on the front, which you can see here. Um, this microphone, uh, made by AKG, in America, when Telefunken lost the distribution for Neumann microphones, they wanted another very high-quality studio vocal mic uh, and they went to AKG and said, can we distribute your C12 in America. Uh, that wasn't allowed, but what they did do was take most of the component parts and use those to build a new microphone, which went under the Telefunken name. It was the ELAM251E. Um, and again, the, uh, the Slate system will model that particular version. It has the same capsule, slightly different electronics. The polar pattern switching was done on the mic body. Um, and of course, it's a slightly different body shape and slightly different head shape. So it has a, a subtly different sound, but the, the general characteristic is very similar. You comers all, both great and small, come listen to my ditty. For it is ye, and none but ye, will view my form with pity. For I can read, write, dance, and fight. In fact, it's all my honour. My failing is, I love strong beer. I am a rambling coma. And 
And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free and I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free The potato is a starchy, tuberous crop from the perennial nightshade Solanum tuberosum. The word potato may refer either to the plant itself or to the edible tuber. In the Andes, where the species is indigenous, there are some other closely related cultivated potato species. In this test, we're comparing Sony's C800G microphone, uh, which was introduced in 1992, uh, and it was intended to be the definitive vocal mic. It was a, a sort of cost, no object microphone. Uh, it actually has the largest power supply of all the microphones we've tested here. Um, it's also the only one you can buy today, uh, new, uh, and it's also the cheapest, believe it or not. In the UK, this microphone would set you back around 7,600 pounds, uh, which is quite a lot, obviously. Um, it's unique in that it has this rather strange cooling fin system out of the back. Um, it's a valve microphone and the idea is that this will help keep the valve cool. It's a Peltier system, it's a thermoelectric cooling. Um, you have a semiconducting layer with metal plates either side. Uh, you put a DC voltage across the semiconductor and it acts as a, as a heat pump effectively. The heat sink here is supposed to remain at room temperature and the bit on the inside gets a little bit cooler. So it helps to keep the valve cool, uh, reduces noise and generally improves the performance. You comers all, both great and small, come listen to my ditty. For it is ye and none but ye will view my form with pity. For I can read, write, dance and fight, in fact it's all my honour. My failing is, I love strong beer, I am a rambling coma. And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free and I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free The potato is a starchy, tuberous crop from the perennial nightshade Solanum tuberosum. The word potato may refer either to the plant itself or to the edible tuber. In the Andes, where the species is indigenous, there are some other closely related cultivated potato species. The microphone for this test is a Neumann again. This is the Neumann U67, uh, which was introduced in 1960 and made until 1971. Uh, this microphone was designed as a replacement for the U47 when the valve in that mic, the VF14, became obsolete. And Neumann took the opportunity to completely reinvent the microphone and pretty much every aspect of it is different. Uh, the most obvious difference from the outside is the, is the shape, the style of the thing. Uh, it's the first microphone they introduced that has that very classic um, conical body and chisel-shaped head, uh, which has become a bit of a style icon of its own. Uh, the other thing they did uh, was in the original U47, the capsule is a one-piece element. The back plate is shared between both diaphragms, and that made it very difficult to get the tensions on the two diaphragms exactly right, which you need to do if you want to match uh, front and back performance for a figure of eight polar pattern or so on. Uh, so when they designed this, they actually built the capsule in two parts and then screwed them together which made it much easier to get exactly the same tension diaphragms and therefore you could make much better matched capsules. So that was a fairly radical change. Um, they also changed the electronics in a big way. Obviously the V14, VF14 valve was obsolete, so they used an EF86 pentode in this one. Um, and because people were moving into different microphone techniques, they were using close miking in a much bigger way. Uh, they introduced a pad so you could turn the level down for close miking, and they also introduced a high-pass filter 
to compensate for proximity effect when you go in very close. And they're controlled by switches on the microphone body. The polar pattern on this thing is also switched from the microphone itself, whereas on the um, previous microphones of the era, a lot of them were controlled from the power supply. Um, in this case, it's all switched on the microphone body itself. Um, interestingly, because this microphone was made in 1960, the original model name was the U60. Um, but the distributor in America, Gotham at that time, um, wanted to capitalize on the success of the U47 and persuaded Neumann to rebrand this as the U67, and that's what we now know it as today. Um, but the original ones, say the first batch of about 20 or so, were actually called the U60. <laughs> You comb us all, both great and small, come listen to my ditty. For it is ye, and none but ye, view my form with pity. For I can read, write, dance and fight, in fact it's all my honour. My failing is, I love strong beer, I am a rambling coma. And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free And I always feel like I got a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free and I always feel like I got in a disease And the rhythm is cheap and the love isn't free The potato is a starchy, tuberous crop from the perennial nightshade Solanum tuberosum. The word potato may refer either to the plant itself or to the edible tuber. In the Andes, where the species is indigenous, there are some other closely related cultivated potato species. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our review of the Slate BMS system. Of course, it's slightly limited in its depth. We haven't tried equalising any of the mics. We haven't tried compressing any of the mics. And, and that might possibly reveal more artefacts or, or change the way you perceive the sounds. But I think generally, from our panel discussion, our general view was that the emulations do capture the character. They are all slightly different, but then the microphones we're comparing them to are all vintage mics. Um, and there will be natural variations anyway in some of those. Uh, but it's a very interesting system. If you want to know more about it, you can find a full review uh, and more depth of our panel discussions in the article in uh, the magazine uh, and on the website www.soundonsound.com uh, and it will be in the November edition. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and share it and subscribe to the Sound on Sound YouTube channel. Also, check out some of our other videos right here. Thanks for watching. <laughs>